There are so many questions and concerns about these drug combinations and what's coming next. So to help us answer some of them is Dr. Ben Coley Johnson. He's a neuroscientist and an addiction expert based in Miami, Florida. Dr. Johnson, thank you for coming back on the show tonight. Thank you and Happy New Year. It's great to be back. Happy New Year to you. Help us understand, if you could, the role of fentanyl, which has been clearly on the uprise, and also these tranquilizers for drug users, just so we can kind of understand why they're coming and not going away, why it's so pleasurable. What do you feel when you take them? Well, fentanyl, as you know, is a, is a synthetic opiate, and it's actually one of the most potent and powerful opiates you can take. It's often used in the hospitals for pain relief, and because it's powerfully addictive, people develop, if you like, a craving for them and it becomes habit forming and then they start to look to get this high again. The difficulty you have with all opiates is that the first time you take it, it gives you an amazing rush and a hit. The second time it's not so great and the third time it's not as great. So people tend to up their dose all the time to get the, to try and get the same bars or basically get back to where they were with the bars. And so they keep, uh, you know, as the saying goes, chasing the dragon and this creates mm. the great craving for, for fentanyl. Dr. Johnson, when we look at these graphs, but more importantly, when we hear these stories, this is bigger than fentanyl supply. You know, it's bigger than pills or tranquilizers. It seems there's something deeper here right now. Deaths keep climbing, even though we know about the dangers. How do we treat that, you know, the deeper layer, not just chemicals? Well, as you know, there's a crisis of mental health in the United States and in the Western world. I was watching uh, um, another channel, I'll mention a different channel to this, um, on, on a British channel, and mental health workers were basically quitting, saying the workload is just too high, there are other resources to be able to help individuals. And now I think we went from a pandemic to basically a tridemic. The tridemic is the pandemic of COVID, the pandemic of alcohol and drug abuse, and the pandemic of mental health issues. So we have a tridemic going on. And what is happening with our tridemic is we have not really thought through that all the problems that are going to ensue after we are able to suppress COVID, hopefully in a year or two, are going to be mental health issues, they're going to be neurological issues, and people are going to feel more and more disenfranchised and disabled uh, by having had COVID. And so it's not possible for us to grapple this problem without addressing mental health issues. And I think that's what you are terming the underlying, how can we actually get to grips with the nation? These new overdoses that we're seeing, they're of mixed substances. It's an opioid plus other stuff mixed in there, which they say it's not quite as simple to treat. You can't just stick, you know, the thing in someone and they, and they come right back to life. Are there any practical pieces of advice like parents or loved ones should watch for to know, okay, this is different. If I give them naloxone, it's not going to bring them back. Anything that would differentiate? Well, as you know, most drugs that are sold on the street are mixed drugs. They're either mixed with some kind of benzodiazepine or mixed with some kind of tranquilizer, and then the opiate is mixed with this. And this is done to prolong the effect of the opiate. And so you can actually give a slightly smaller dose of the opiate and I suppose uh, make more money by doing that. And the, the person uh, comes back to you because they have a longer effect. Um, the difficulty with things like naloxone, although they are perfect reverses of naloxone, is that they're very short acting. So it's possible to give somebody a naloxone shot and they wake up and then they fall back into the same uh, crisis of respiratory depression, you know, an hour or two later because now the naloxone's worn off, but they took a super heavy dose of the opiate. Naloxone is not treatment for opiate uh, addiction. The treatment for opiate addiction is medication-assisted treatment. It is seeing your doctor or your uh, psychologist. It is working through the issues and making sure that you get better in time.
It sounds like the bottom line there is if you're worried about yourself or others, always probably call 911, always seek medical attention. Uh, there are no assurances with that, um, that everything's going to be okay. Dr. Bencoli Johnson, yet again, thank you very much. Thank you and have a great year.